Today, I'm going to demonstrate to you how to detect fraudulent transaction in a financial institution. This uh, demonstration will portray uh, Red Hat OpenShift data science uh, project, which helps data scientists um, to seamlessly train their model and not, um, not figuring out the overhead of setting up a cluster and all the tools associated with it. Um, I would be using TensorFlow um, and um, so, uh, start, uh, I would also be using a product called Starburst, which internally uses Trino. And there will be briefly OpenVINO used in this, um, but OpenVINO is more under the hood of uh, Red Hat OpenShift data science uh, model mesh. It's under model mesh uses OpenVINO. Um, model server. So let's say you're a data scientist and you have a user over here who is um, who want who has some transaction who wants to verify if that transaction is fraud or not. So to do that, uh, what we would do, let's say we have a data set. Uh, I picked up a data set from online. I will share the resources later from where I picked up. Um, and that data set has some, we need to do some pre-processing. So we will do some pre-processing. And this is the area where Starburst will help us, or at least Starburst has many other features, uh, but this is the place where I'm going to use Starburst for. And then I'm going to use uh, TensorFlow to train my data set to a model. And after that, I'm going to serve that model using OVMS, OpenVINO model server, which Rhodes model mesh uses as a backend internally. So now the user, when I have this model served over here, the user can uh, send a REST request um, and uh, can receive a reply. Uh, gets a reply with it is for a fraud or not. So, just pre some brief interaction about what Rhodes is, but there will be links for more uh, if you want to learn more about Rhodes, Starburst, or OpenVINO. Uh, Red Hat OpenShift Data Science is a managed uh, cloud service for data scientists and uh, developers. It provides a supported, fully supported environment in which to rapidly develop, train, and test machine learning models in a public cloud before deploying in production. Starburst is a fast and scalable SQL uh, engine architected for separation of storage and compute. Starburst Enterprise is cloud native and can query data in S3, Hadoop. Basically, Starburst can have multiple data sources displayed to you in one, um, in one dashboard. We'll see that. OpenVINO is a Intel toolkit. Uh, um, uh, we would be using that briefly they provide a kernel they also provide um, a, a, a model serving model server using which we will be serving our model that said uh, so this is where this is the section where um, my uh, starburst query editor or starburst functionality will come into play in my demonstration and this is where OpenVINO uh, will would be used internally. Now let's see all of this in action. So this is the GitHub repository, uh, which has all the code which is needed. I'm just going to. It it has all the instructions and everything. So you might be here from sandbox or uh, red hat demo platform rhdp um, and um, oh, or or you have your own osd cluster or something or or your rosa cluster or something in which of course the prerequisite is you will have a uh, ro uh, roads uh, which is which is the backbone for for this demo so I'll just try to open this on, on one side like this. And uh, yeah. 
so so uh, as for the this the um, our repository first we need to create our data science project and the way to do that is we will go over to our uh, dashboard red hat ods uh, dashboard here we'll come to the data science uh, projects place we'll create a data science project we'll create we'll name it this we'll add a workbench the, the notebook image we're going to select is um, is TensorFlow because that's what we are going to use. So basically, this will kind of install all the TensorFlow packages for us in our JupyterHub notebook, which Rhodes uses in the backend. So Rhodes is an accumulation of multiple uh, individual softwares, if you may think it in that way. We'll give that a name. And we'll create this. We'll give it like a like few minutes or maybe one minute for this to start up. That's when I will have my I'll have my Jupyter Hub notebook ready. If we hover over here, we can see what this guy is doing. We can see the event logs if we want. Like it's pulling the notebook image and stuff like that. And then, voila, it's there. So, so now our notebook uh, is, is, is uh, image is pulled and we are ready to access our Jupyter Hub notebook. So, so there's this, when I click on this, I will not see this permission thing because I have already logged into this a couple of times. So it's the R back policy you may see you will just see it for the first time but so once logged in what does it say we are here now it's asking us to clone this repository so we'll come over here and clone this repository good at this point pretty much it's asking us to double click on uh, our repository and notebook. So uh, we can ditch this uh, readme file because we will have all of that in our Jupyter Hub notebook. So I'll close this window, open this guy in a bigger format or full screen. Yeah, full screen, good. Now, mm, We'll start by installing some dependencies which we need for our project. Then, um, while that is happening, I'll paste on this uh, cell. I need my AWS access key and secret key. So I'll paste that. I'll blur this area in the video later. So next, that's done. The second is that. So this cell over here, this helps us to visualize. We will visualize few graphs in, uh, later in our notebook. So this will actually make the graph look pretty. So we'll run that. Uh, after running that, it's saying use Starburst Enterprise platform to visualize and clean your data. Okay, so we go to this guide. This guide has some uh, requirements, but basically we have our original data set which has some which has some empty values. It's a CSV file which is our data set. It has like uh, around two thousand two hundred and eighty thousand value entries in it. Um, it may it may have some a empty values or it not may it will have some empty values we need to update that to our s3 uh depending on how you came to this video you probably already have this set up for you or you might be bringing your own s3 in that case you will be following these instructions and then you also have to configure starburst but in this video again 
depending on the source from where you're coming, the servers might already be configured. Servers needs a license. So, so that, that, that might already be configured. I have already gone ahead and configured all of this, which is to say, uh, uploaded my video, uh, sorry, not my video, but uh, my CSV file to my S3 bucket, which is over here. Uh, in this folder called data, which has my uh, values. And I've also configured a uh, Starburst. So if you see at the end of this configuration, there is something called Starburst provides a UI, which I have a route here. And all of that information uh, is actually inside this, uh, the YAML file to create a license, to create AWS credentials and uh, the secret and then the Starburst Enterprise CRD, this Starburst Hive CRD, um, or CR, not D, CR, and also the route, uh, which will help us uh, route or route. I don't know how you pronounce, but so, so which is all done here. Um, and now when I clicked on the link, clicked on my route link, it brought us here. You can give any name, I just use admin. When you have the Starburst Enterprise license, you get this query editor, nice looking query editor, uh, which can help us with, uh, this is one of the features, um, which can help us you know, seamlessly use uh, Starburst. So what I'm going to do at this point is take this out and split the screen half and half so that we know what to do here. Okay, so so first thing first, it's asking us to create a, a schema. Step one, so we'll copy that. We will uh, paste it here. And this is a different uh, bucket. I'll change it to my own bucket, which is this guy. Yes, that's right. So this will uh, create a schema for me with the name fraud. So that created a schema. And if we refresh this uh, file viewer or data source viewer, you can see that the new schema is here. So one fun thing which I love to do is, is use this S3 here and then add a schema. Now, in that way, what happens is here on when I run the commands, I won't have to specifically say, okay, I want to go to the S3 data source and I want to go to the fraud schema. I can just directly say uh, the table name and stuff like that. Uh, so that's, I find that useful. So let's see, to continue with our example, the second thing is we will try to connect our our data set, which is here in our S3 to our um, Starburst. And the way to do that, or to visualize the data, to do that would be we will create a table named, or we can remove this part here. You can keep it, doesn't matter. Uh, we will create a table named original, and these are the fields. We know about these fields already. And uh, we will use a width clause where we will see our external location is S3, that's the protocol uh, to access S3, uh, fraud detection DS data format CSV. This runs successfully, we should see something called uh, original. So there you go. So our data, data is already here. The next part is, so this guy is done is to visualize this data. So what we're gonna do, instead of copying the command from there, uh, Starburst uh, already provides us like few most, I don't know, used commands for, so I'll just click on that and print it. Oh. I'll make this big here. Yeah, so there you, you can see, we can visualize all the data. And you may see that, like for example, this guy here, he, uh, we 
v13 column has an empty value on this row. So this is what we will be tackling next using Starburst. But before we do that, I also want to copy this command. I can just do Control C, go Enter, Enter, Paste, and I want to count how many, how many um, columns or sorry rows were there in the original um, data set before we do our stuff. So originally there is 284,800-something uh, rows in this data set. We will now clean that data set, which is basically remove any column which has um, any column which has um, empty, uh, any row which is empty will remove that column. The, uh, we will use this, this command over here. Uh, but before we do that, we'll actually use a trick, a trick to set a session variable. And you may ask, what is this? The curious mind may ask. So basically, what happens is the way Starburst works in the back end is you can have, there's something called coordinator and there's something also called a worker. So the worker basically, think of the worker as the one which does the heavy lifting in these queries and the coordinator as like the traffic guy, like it's, it directs what to do. Like, uh, so whenever I run this command, this command goes to, uh, goes to the coordinator and the coordinator uses the, uh, us one of the compute or all of the computes depending on how many uh, workers you have to do the actual heavy lifting there. But in the process, what happens is you may end up with multiple CSV file and that's okay uh, to end up with multiple CSV file because that uh, it parallelly processes our data set. Um, but, but we want one single data, data, uh, data set as an output uh, because that's how I wrote this um, the Jupyter Hub notebook, which is this notebook is written in that way. Uh, so what we are going to do, we're going to first run this command and we'll see that it's something called writer min size, which is 32, which basically anytime a data set uh, goes beyond 30, 32, uh, the writer scale property kicks in, which is enabled. And it says, okay, well, it's two, uh, more than 32, the size of the data set. So I should uh, create another file. And as long as, till the time, all of the data set is not processed. So I know my data set is roughly 160 MB. The way to get the trick or kind of like a hack to get around it is I know my data set is, can max be 160 MB. So I will set this property to 160 MB. And then if I run this again, we will see that this is 160 MB. So in this case, what happens is while one of the worker is processing my data set, it's, it won't paralyze, parallelly try to process it because it's like, oh, well, this data set is within 160 MB. So although, writer scaling properties are enabled, but I have not met the minimum threshold. So that's what it is here to get a single file in the end. So after this, the next part is, this is the way how we clean our data set. And after cleaning the data set, what we will do is we will save that in, in a new, new table called clean. I'll remove this part. I don't need that I'll, because I have already set it over here. So uh, I'll use clean as the table name. And this will go to my bucket named fraud detection BS inside a folder called clean. And once I run this guy, it 
it, this thing is going to take like I think about a minute or 45 uh, 45 seconds uh meanwhile yeah that's about it we can review while that guy is doing that we can review there's nothing more to do here now results are like we should go to, back to our um, s3 bucket and we'll see there's a folder called clean which has our new file something like this so we'll go back to our original uh, and we'll close this readme file so this guy is finished and it also tells us how many rows it has written so if you remember initially we had 280,000 uh, rows now there is 253,000 rows approximately so the rest of them were, had some empty values so they were removed so this in my case i'm considering this as my data set is finally cleaned so let's uh, anything else to do here no well, just uh, you can also check. Oh no, uh, the schema. See the new table is updated here, so that's all cool. So I'll log this out. Now I'll close this window. Zoom and I'll make this window larger. Let's go to my S3 bucket. Let's refresh it and like. Like, like it said over there, I have a clean folder in my S3 bucket, which has a CSV file. It doesn't have the, um, it doesn't have the extension.csv, but it is a CSV file because we've set the format in our query as CSV file. So now we'll, we will go back to our notebook, we'll open this guy, and uh we already posted our um access keys and secret keys secret key now if I, there's a small helper function over here which will help me to download that file the clean uh, data set to my local directory over here and once it's downloaded the reason we are downloading is then we will use that file from our local to uh, perform our model, uh, our training process, our training and testing process. So let's do that. Let's run this guy. If all goes well, I should have a folder over here. So it, it's already completed, as you can see. I let me refresh, and uh, there you go. I have this file here. It is 142.6 MB. Great. Next part is I will. Uh, use uh, pandas data frame a read csv file and i have used over here zero because i only have one file uh remember how we set that uh, session variable earlier session variable i could never say that word nicely uh, but um that session variable let's say if you had not set that what would happen is you would have ended up with multiple csv files here and basically here you would have had to loop through the whole folder i didn't want to do that i wanted to keep it simple or maybe use a concatenate function or something i don't know but loop through and yeah but i wanted to keep it simple so i left it uh, i used the session variable as a hack uh, let's describe our folders we can see the total number of rows like we saw in starburst ui editor um, there were 253,000 approximately rows. So if I have to explain this in this data set, these columns in the beginning are all of these, which you see, uh, I think there are about 30, uh, 30 columns. These will be our training features. Uh, if I am using the correct data science or machine learning uh, terminologies, and this is the variable uh, column, which all of all of these columns will help me to predict the class. So the class is binary. If it is if it's zero, means no, it's not fraud. If it's one, that means it's fraud. So 
So what we will do next is we will um, we will rename that class field uh, or column to something called is fraud to make it more you know sense. It would make more sense. And we will also see the percentage of fraud in our whole data set. So let's run that. So after doing this, if I okay so so we can see the percentage is 0 0.0017 that's like really small number um of of fraud so this is something this in data science world if i understand correctly it is called imbalanced data set um and uh, because uh, therefore our next task would be to one of the next task would be to do the uh, only oh the only 0 0.17 per, uh, percent is fraud which is like an imbalance so while uh, a low percentage of credit card uh, fraud is certainly gr uh, good news <laughs> for the credit card company but uh, um, the writer whom i'm following uh or the blog in total uh, towards data science is kind of funny uh is 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 good but it's not good for our model so we will use a technique called smoke and uh, we'll also look for some missing data but i don't we will not find any missing data because there is none in this data set we'll see the correlation plot uh graph uh the correlation graph gives us a all-rounded understanding of the variables in uh, in in our data set. Uh, yeah. The next part is we'll define the x and y's. Uh, if I understand correctly, X are the features and Y is the variable. Um, yeah, let's define those. Then we will use, uh, use a standardization technique. Basically, it's best practice for training neural networks uh, to standardize uh, the, the, the features. Um, so that we have a good model we'll do the training and test split split uh and this is the smoke technique i forget this full form yes the full form of smoke is synthetic minority oversampling technique the in this what this will do is basically uh because of that low percentage of fraud which we saw earlier here uh which is 0 0.17 percent uh this this small technique is basically going to uh, balance it out so now you can see that equal amounts of z so we have zero and one zero means no fraud and one means fraud this has balanced our data set there is equal amounts of fraud and equal amounts of no fraud the next part is uh I don't know how this legible. Uh, I'll, I'll try to zoom a little bit. Seems like it may not be very legible. Okay, good. I hope it's you can see well now. Yeah. Okay. So here now, uh, we'll uh, we'll define our layers. So we are using. Like we, like I said, we are using thirty uh, input dimensions, and we have a couple of layers over here. And uh, I think sigmoid is this is the one which is used for something binary like zero and one. Let's run that. So that's our layers, and the next part is uh, the training part. Okay, so this is the fun part, the training. Here we have 100 epochs, and uh, which will take some time to run 100 epochs here. What I will do is I will run 
this and pause the video and uh, come back when uh, when it's done or maybe i'll just do 10 even 10 takes time but uh, yeah i'll pause the video and uh, i'll come back when it's done Okay, so now we can see that our 10 epochs are completed. Um, but uh, something to note here that we started with an accurate on epoch one, we started with an uh, accuracy of 0 0.21. And we at epoch 10, we ended with the accuracy of 57%. So with 10 epochs, that's all you're going to get. If you run it uh, higher, best case, best would be 100. Uh, you will see that your accuracy is improving a lot more. Um, but uh, this is just a test model. I'm just showing you how to run this. When you're doing this at your leisure, you can probably run 100, but just it, it takes a little, probably 20 minutes or so. Well, that again depends on how many workers and this and that, how much resources your cluster has, uh, all of that. But yeah, it takes a while. Anyway, so after running, so our model is ready at this point. And uh, we will now, what we will do is we will, we will run. Uh, We will save our TensorFlow model. That's what we are doing here uh, in a folder called TensorFlow PB models, because that's the format, I think, uh, .pb or something in which it saves. And then you're going to use a, a binary called model optimizer. So it, this binary is provided by um, OpenVINO. This binary will take the TensorFlow model and convert it into OpenVINO IR format so that we can uh, run this, serve this model through OpenVINO IR. So let's run this uh, uh, cell and see what it gets. So we can see the assets are written over here. Let's refresh this so we can see here we have our saved model and the assets and everything and then we have uh the model optimizer has also converted taken that model and converted it into into the file into the supported format open Wino ir format which the open Wino model server can read okay so that said uh the next part is to upload my open Wino ir formatted model to the to to our s3 bucket and there is a guide for that but one thing to note here that um, depending on where you are again coming uh, sandbox uh, or rhdp or having your own cluster or what um the step one in this guide uh is is kind of optional i should mention that here is optional to download this and uh, upload it optional in a way because i recently added this new cell over here because we already have the aws credentials earlier here uh we're gonna make use of that and the session and we will uh, upload our files which is these two files over here <laughs> to our S3 bucket. So let's actually first go ahead and uh, run this so that our model is uploaded in S3 bucket. And it's done like that. So let's go to our S3 bucket and check if our model is uploaded. There you see, there you go. Um, our model is uploaded in the model folder. Great. Now, at this point, I'll go back to the guide. The guide is still useful. It's not like the guide is not useful. The guide is still useful. And I will tell you why the guide is useful. Because now that we have our model uploaded to S3, 
we need to do uh, some more configuration in our data science project or in the ODS dashboard. Um, and that is what this the step two, uh, sorry, is. the step one, we, we, have, we don't need to do step two, we don't need to do here because we have already uploaded. Step three, this is the part which we will be doing here. So basically we'll create a data connection, give it a name, something something um okay i was looking to copy paste something but didn't find any credit card fraud s3 and again we will uh, use our credentials We'll have to blur this section to uh, need to remember to do that and paste that and we'll leave everything else because my uh, my uh, bucket is us east so i'll leave the region to there uh, and my bucket name yes that's the important part copy that i'll paste my bucket name here and i will just create the connect connection there's this new thing about connecting to my workbench i do um, is that needed no it doesn't seem like it's needed <clears throat> it's all right uh, yeah okay so now uh my data connection is created the next thing which i which we need to do over here is to deploy um server first so and this is just the properties of the server it's just one instance it's a small i'll me i will definitely need to make this uh, uh routable externally so i'll click on that and i'll click configure so there you go my uh it's pretty instant my model server uh, server is there uh i need to just now deploy a model in it in which that model will serve so i'll scroll down uh oh oh it's actually this gif shows me how to do it i'll click the model oh okay this guy here then model server uh, open why now ir format you can if you have your model as o and an x that's also supported existing data connection yes we already created a data connection and we will give it a path and the path would be models dot model to actually no it would be model path is model and inside model just yeah just just model oh let's uh deploy that <laughs> We'll wait a little bit for this model to get deployed there. Yeah, so our model is now deployed. Like it says, if I use the size of this guy, it's deployed loaded so i'll uh this guide also tells me to copy the inference link and go back to notebook so i'll copy this inference link and i will go back to my notebook yeah go back to my notebook back to my notebook and here this guy is asking me to paste my inference link the next task so that's what i do i have uh um uh, already pre-formatted uh, a request json request which i'm gonna send now json data which i'm going to send as a post request to my rest endpoint which is or my inference uh, link which is this guy 
so let's run that and see if that is a valid oh okay so good so based on this it is telling me that my output is actually this is a fraud because it's, it says it's one which means it's a fraud now how how effective our data our model is we pretty much know our model is probably 50 percent accurate at this point a 49.99 percent which is 50 percent accurate uh so there's a high chance 50 percent chance that this is wrong but if we yeah but the purpose of this 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 uh, this uh, demonstration was not to you know have the perfect model uh but more to how seamlessly you can do which is Jupyter, uh, all this different software pro products, which is like Jupyter Hub Notebook, TensorFlow libraries, and uh, other uh, Python libraries, and Starburst, and data sources, and connections. And so, so all of that, how it can help your productivity, and how quickly you can stand up, you can focus on what, uh, what data science can focus, data scientists can focus on is just doing uh, creating good models and not on the overhead around it i also have some few fun stuff which i was playing around with uh, yeah so basically yeah let's 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 run those guys so i'm i'm just uh, taking the uh, using data science people pretty much stuff, uh, knows what it is but uh, i'm using the prediction where if it is zero uh, if it is more than because this value is here supposed to be in probability in a prob uh, probability of 0 to 1 can be 0 0.1 0 0.2 so i'm saying that if it is zero, more than 0 0.5 then it is fraud and uh, if it is less than 0 0.5 then it is not fraud so that's what i did now what i'm going to do is i'm i'm also calculating the accuracy score here the accuracy score here tells me that it's 99% accu uh, accurate but Wait till we get the F1 score. Uh, the F1 score tells us that it's not 91% accurate. And I honestly don't know a lot of difference between this guy here and this guy here. Yeah, that is something, I don't know. I, I, I'm just not so data science literate, I guess. Uh, but I do know that the F1 score is 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 different than the accuracy score. And this guy, the, the confusion matrix, this is this is the thing which I like, is tells us or tells me that so so what it tells me is the true label and the predicted label. So it's saying that the true label predicted non-fraud to be non-fraud 50,606 times. So that's great. Uh, but uh, but it predicted fraud to be non-fraud 22 times. That That is probably a problem. You cannot predict a fraud to be non-fraud. So, uh, so our model is not perfect. We see that here. Uh, the next is, uh, the other way is, our model also predicts 25 of non-frauds to be fraud, which is okay because that is, it's, it's, a, it's a false positive, right? That, non-frauds are treated as fraud that's okay you're not it's not a problem in the financial world uh but what is a problem is this 22 guy over here um and the other 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 thing which we know is our model says 75 of the frauds as fraud so that's good anyway so that's all about uh, this uh, presentation i hope you enjoyed and uh, the 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 GitHub repository has all the all the details um, on things which I I was setting up over here. Those details are there. Things which I was not set in which I didn't set up here. Uh, those details are also there in the um, in the GitHub GitHub repository. Um, yeah, thank you, thank you so much.